So in this video, we're just gonna talk quickly about mapping diagrams and then about the range, the domain, and the codomain. So first about mapping diagrams, this is basically what they look like. So someone decided to start drawing functions like this. Uh, don't ask me why, it's just another way of, of doing it basically. So in this blue one here, you're gonna have all your inputs. So those little dots there are gonna be different numbers. They're gonna be your inputs. Then the line here, that's your function happening. So it's the rule that's changing your input. And these dots here are your outputs. So that's basically the basics of a, of a mapping diagram. There's not much else to it. Um, so you just need to know that. We're gonna know some other things about it now. I'll just go through them. But first we're gonna talk about uh, these three things. So we're gonna talk about the domain, the codomain, and then the range. Codomain, range. So these are three words you'll hear quite often. Um, yeah, you just really need to know the definitions of them. So I'll just scroll down here and go for them. So the domain is going to be, just as simply as possible, all of the possible inputs. So all of the possible inputs. Oh, no. Inputs there. So that's what you can put in in X. The codomain. That's all of the possible outputs. So all of the possible outputs. And then lastly, the range. Ooh, that's a weird over. The range is gonna be all of the actual outputs. Okay, so there's a slight difference between the codomain and the range. Um, all of the actual outputs. So the way we're gonna draw it is we're gonna do it with the mapping diagram. It actually does help to explain the codomain, the domain, the codomain, and the range. So I'll just draw one out quickly here. So here we have our little diagram drawn, and hopefully this will work to um, describe all of the above things. So here on the left, we have our inputs, so zero, one, two, three, four, okay? Then we have our red function here, uh, and then we have our outputs. So if we look up here, the domain, it says all of the possible inputs. So this one here on the left, is called the domain, okay? And it's not that zero, one, two, three, and four are the only uh, possible inputs. There's loads, loads more, so that's all the space in here, is all the numbers. So you have to specify the domain. So you can say, for example, here I'm just gonna say um, integers, integers and zero. Okay, so normally they use kind of more mathematical terms, but just, we're saying integers, so whole numbers and zero, they're all in the domain, okay? So that means all the positive, all the possible inputs have to be either an integer or zero. Um, and then this one here, the codomain, are all of the possible outputs. So this is the big blue one here. So I'm gonna say the codomain, all of the possible outputs. So the possible outputs are the numbers that can come out of that. So for example, all of these, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, they are all in the codomain, yeah? Um, and yeah, basically because they're possible outputs because uh, they can come out of this function. And then I'll just use this as kind of a um, example to distinguish them. And this is the range. So this is the actual output. So I'll just um, right, say that again. So actual, nope, actual outputs. And this is going to be possible outputs. So the difference is that for this function here, 25 and 36 don't go into it. So that means they're not in the range because they're not actual outputs, but they are possible outputs if we put other inputs in. So hopefully that example makes sense basically with our mapping diagram. So in this case, you might've figured out that the, the function, so I'll call it f of x, is just x squared because zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, and four squared is 16. It doesn't really matter what the function is. I just wanted to get this point across that the domain are the possible inputs the codomain are the possible outputs, and the range are the actual outputs. So hopefully this example just clears that up. So if they ask you for any of those definitions, um, you can just remember this. And also if they use kind of fancy words like domain, codomain, or range in a question, generally you can just ignore them, to be honest, and just carry on with the question, I find anyway. They just throw them in uh, to try and be matzy and fancy, but you don't really need them that much. So that's kind of the intro to functions. We're gonna talk about the different types of functions we're gonna come across in the next video. So I'll see you then.